everybody, now we are down to the part 2 of this barn visit. We are about to enter the goat barn per se and we are tasked to do two things for today. First task is to do pregnancy diagnosis via ultrasonography and the second task is to get a nasal swab for bacterial isolation and antibiotic sensitivity from a patient with recurring colds or nasal discharge. Come join me! Before going up, we are entering via the foot bath. And you have an inclined plane here, so it would be easy for the goat to come up and down the barn. I arrived now here at the goat barn, and the farm staff are preparing the milk feeding for our kids. I'm sure that you will enjoy seeing them nursing and really gobbling up that milk, that very, very nutritious milk. them put the milk bottles here and then one by one they put them here in this just handmade container for the milk bottles. This is a very good and efficient way to feeding the uh, the kids with milk so at least one person can do it rather than having many people holding each bottle and waiting for the kids to finish drinking. The key here to avoid any spoilage is to ensure that each of the nipples would not have very big holes so that you won't experience the leakage that you have seen earlier. But actually, if you would experience some leakage, it would just be minimal because most of the things would just go right to the milk bottle and drink and consume all of the milk. We have this rubber here to keep the bottles in place without the rubber the bottles might be off from the hole because the kids will most likely pull push and pull push and pull because that's their normal mechanism when they're trying to breastfeed up from their nanny goats one issue that i see when you are doing this type of feeding would be possible transmission of pathogens so to keep that very, very minimal, always ensure that you sterilize each of the feeding bottles before and after use. It would be of course difficult to identify each bottle specific for a kid. So that's why with this group type of feeding, you just have to make sure that the materials you are using are always very, very clean. When I arrive at the goat farm, the first thing that I would do is actually do my rounds to check every animal and have that at least clinical eye to see if there would be any off animals. First, we have this very, very simple uh, wheel here that the goats may use for positive reinforcement. So something just to entertain them. It is at the middle and it usually uh, helps them relieve boredom. Let's proceed here. This is actually already a renovated type of housing for the goats. And later on, I will show you their old type of enclosure. And with this type, they already have the feeding shop outside. It is where they put the concentrates and also the corn silage. And we have this vertical post here to keep the kids in place. As of this time, the hole is still large enough, so kids that would be really young, those that are still nursing from their nanny goats, may still be able to go out. 
and that may be a problem because if there would be pathogens that can be easily transmitted. We have a small door here that would keep the nanny goat and the kids in place. The enclosure here, we have steel matting as the sidings. This is already very good, but in our experience, sometimes the kids would have their in ear tags broken because they were uh, stuck on the sides of the steel matting. So one recommendation was to put this tarpaulin, so at least that would be minimized. And we have a very good feature of the nozzle, the water spout there. So at least it lessens the water wastage. Okay, but still we have a bucket here for the water. We have another type of enclosure here wherein bamboo flats were used. And this one would be uh, efficient in terms of enclosure. But in terms of feeding, it will be more laborious because they would need to go inside to give the feeds or the corn silage and also to remove any leftovers. In terms of cleaning, it will take more having this type of enclosure. In terms of security, this would be better because it really ensures that the animals would be inside. We have here the very old type of enclosure where we have steel matting on all sides of the pen. And in terms of durability, it is not so good because you can see that it's wobbly. So we don't, we don't have a very strong foundation here or in here to keep it in place. We have carpooling on the side, so at least we won't have any mistakes or accidents again in terms of removal of ear tags and you can see here that we have some damage still matting that may cause trauma to the animals inside okay. for this farm they are now slowly converting to the new design as recommended so which design do you like please comment in the box below <laughs> One of the essential items that you would need in your farm would be a weighing scale. So this is a digital weighing scale. Of course, in the terms of efficiency, this is better. And having more accurate measurements would also be good in your system. And another feature of this farm would be the provision of mineral blocks. We have specifically here a salt leak which would be needed for the supplementation of the animal. Another would be a shoot here where we do milking and also sometimes ultrasonography of the animals. So the particular candidate animal would be coming up this inclined plane and the head would be enclosed here. And that would give me enough room already to do my examination or in case for the milking process. As mentioned earlier, I will be taking samples, the nasal swab for bacterial isolation and antibiotic sensitivity. Our patient here is F4175, which was purchased from outside, specifically coming from Tarlac. And starting from purchase, he was already quarantined. It is already past the 60-day quarantine, and yet he is still suffering from this cold starting when he arrived at this farm. I have here sterile long nasal swabs to get the samples. So we are only getting upper respiratory samples because this patient is not coughing anyway. So a, a bronchial alveolar lavage is not warranted for this particular case.
I am going to insert the long nasal swab on the left nares. And there is actually profuse serous nasal discharge. I have prepared pre-labeled microscope slides and I will make the smear here. So I will slide the cotton swab here to make that smear. I will prepare it on two sides. This is now for air dry and later on I will do heat drying as well to really have that embedded smear. Always do duplicates. So for this one, we will have another sterile long nasal swab. And we will get sample coming from the right narrow. <laughs> We lift the septum. Okay. So now, there is blood. Um, I'm surprised to see blood here. So I do not do much irritation because this is only soft. And I didn't really expect to cause any trauma inside the nasal septum. So it is evident actually that there is bleeding inside. But we don't have any profuse blood coming outside. So this is something very, very exciting. I will do another impression smear here. And I will do another swab. Let's check on the left nares again and have this deeper. And this one I will dip on saline solution. Again, we release the septum. Okay, there's blood again. No? So both nares are now with this blood. I will cut it so it will fit right inside the tube. We also do the abdominal approach with the use of a convex probe. First, we have to shave the area right here so that we would have a better image of what's inside. This is now the closed version of the feeding trough. You can easily detach it from the frame here. And you can hang it here with the use of this rubber tip. It will ensure that the animals inside, you have two kids and the nanny goat, enclosed during night time. And that's it for this episode. 
Thank you so much for joining me in this wonderful farm visit. I hope you learned a lot seeing all these very cute kids together with their nanny goats. And hopefully, you will still join me in my upcoming farm visit. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Please don't be shy to hit that notification button for you to be abreast with my vlog. Please give your comments down below, especially if you like this episode. And if you learned something new in this episode, please like and share this channel. Thank you very much, everybody. Goodbye!